Hey, my name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today I've got for you 25 tips and tricks in Photoshop that you just must know. They're going to be helpful things, some things I've talked about before, some things that I haven't talked about in a while, and some things I've, well, never talked about before, and we learn all about them right now. Let's jump into Photoshop. Okay, here in the land of dreams and make-believe, we are in Photoshop. Let's try to get through this list of 25 Photoshop tips and tricks rather quickly. First and foremost, it's bird's eye view. Hold down the letter H and just click and drag and it will zoom you out and give you the little viewing box and you can zoom in anywhere on the image. I talk about this one a lot, but it's because I love it and it's just so cool to be able to do it very helpful. Tip number two, I talk about this one as well often. It's painting a selection using quick selection. You double click over here on your quick selection icon and make sure that color is indicating selected areas. You see that color indicates selected areas. You can change your, your color to whatever you like. I just like green. And then you can go in and quick mask mode is activated and you can just paint this green mist all over what you want to select. Such a fast, easy way to make big soft edge selections that just kind of have to blend in with your image. Hit the letter Q to make the selection. And by the way, if you have no selection and you don't want to come over here and select quick select every uh, quick select every single time, just hit the letter Q and boom, you enter into quick select mode. And of course, at this point, you could do something like bring up levels and say, ah, you know what? Let's see what happens if we take a little bit of green out of this water, make it a little bit more bluish purplish. And there you have it painting selections with quick selection. So now tip number three is the temporary tool. And I don't know about you, but when I'm editing stuff, I like to be able to just select a tool. And if I need something, it's I don't want to have to do anything in terms of breaking my workflow and going and choosing another tool. Virtually every tool in Photoshop, you can simply press the letter for that, the, for that tool. Like if we want the lasso tool, press and hold the letter L. It'll temporarily switch to lasso where we can make a selection, let go of L, and we're back to the dodge tool that we had been using before. Probably the biggest and most popular tool that you use that does this is pressing and hold spacebar. It temporarily gives you the hand tool with which you navigate, but you still never lose the, the active tool that you're using and working with. Okay, tip number four. I don't know about you, but I don't like the fact that when I'm zoomed out and I can see my whole image, I can't move it around my Photoshop document because if I'm working down here in like the bottom corner, I like to be able to work in the middle of my screen. But unfortunately, I have to zoom in in order to navigate over and make that the middle of my screen. But do I? The answer is no. You can go up to Photoshop Preferences on Windows. This would be Edit Preferences. I'm going to go Photoshop Preferences. I'm going to click away from uh, Photoshop About there. Photoshop Preferences. Go down here to Tools and I'm going to tick on this option right here. Over scroll. I'm going to tick it on and now I can see my whole image Oh, I don't want to create a, uh, a black dot there. I can see my whole image and I can navigate and move it around. It's not locked right there into the middle of my viewing area. I love over scroll. So our fifth tip of the day, and this is a very underrated way to work in Photoshop, I think it's using blank adjustment layers. So you just pick an adjustment layer like curves, slap it onto your layer, don't even do anything to it, and just change the blend mode. Like multiply, it makes it darker. Overlay, it adds more contrast. Soft light, adds more contrast, but in sort of a more subtle way. Screen, brightens the image up. Lots of cool things you can do. And then of course, because you have your opacity slider, you can just sort of brighten the image a little bit or darken the image a little bit. Whatever you want to do, you can do it with blank adjustment layers. Such a cool little thing you can do in Photoshop. So tip number six is quickly changing layer or brush or other tool opacities. This is really, really great. First and foremost, we've got a picture of some Egyptian stuff, pyramids, sphinx, you name it. Let's say I wanted to add some of this orange saturation to the foreground. Obviously, the background's a mess. So we would just select our mask, Commander Control I to invert it and fill it with black. And then we grab the brush tool. But the brush is painting at 100% opacity. So when we start painting with white, we're going to get this really, really heavy, really saturated orange. I don't like that. I want to change the opacity of my brush. So I hit a number from one to zero, let's say a two, and that gives me 20% opacity, which now means I'm going to paint a little bit of that saturation in there, right? Like there's before and there's after. Now, if I want to change the flow, I just hold down shift and hit like eight or shift zero brings back to 100. Regular zero brings the opacity of the brush back to 100. But you may be thinking, what if I want to lower the layer opacity, not the tool. By the way, that works with all these different tools, with your stamp brush, with the eraser, with the dodge and burn tools, with all these different tools, you just hit the number that you want and it's going to give you the opacity. Oh, by the way, if you have an exact opacity like 46, just hit 46 very quickly and you get 46. But going back to changing the layer opacity, just grab the move tool or a tool that doesn't have that number feature and over here on our layer panel, we don't really have to do anything. We can just hit a number like four 
and the hue saturation layer is now at 40%. By the way, you can change the fill by holding down shift and hitting shift 5 or shift 4 for uh, 40. Shift 0 to bring fill back and a regular 0 to bring the layer back to 100% opacity. So just remember, when you see those opacity and fill or opacity and flow type slider uh, inputs, Try using your numbers. It's a really, really fast way to quickly change and dial in the opacity or fill or flow that you want. All right, tip number seven. This is really super duper useful. When you're working with pretty much anything, you're gonna be creating selections. And when you create selections, you're gonna realize you messed up the selection and it's not where you want it to be. Well, instead of committing the selection and then going select, deselect, or using the hotkey, command or control D, as you draw out the selection, hold down the space bar and move your selection around. Huge time saver and something you absolutely should be doing. Tip number eight is the rubber band and other viewing modes of the pen tool. Let's say we want to create a line along this little ridge here. Well, we can grab our pen tool and we can go ahead and start clicking and dragging and, you know, building out the path that we want. But is there a better way to do this? Well, if we hit the little cog wheel, we can number one, turn on rubber band, which what that's going to do is it's going to show us where the path goes, which is really kind of helpful. And we can come in here and say, all right, I know the path is going to hook right around there. It takes the guess work out of the whole thing. Also, we can go to the cog and say, you know what? I want the line to be more visible. Go to a three pixel width line. Maybe I want the color to be different because I'm working on a solid blue image. So you can change a lot with regard to your line. For me, I prefer kind of just the default one and blue but I do like to leave rubber band checked on. It makes it super duper useful. And just a bonus little tip, if you do drop an anchor point before you let go of it, you can hold the space bar and just move that point around. Here we've got this beautiful RE camera and I'm going to grab my brush tool and I wanna talk about smoothing. So there is this little smoothing option here that's shut off. We want to open up our brush panel here and just tick smoothing on and that'll activate smoothing for us. And then what we can do is just crank up the amount of smoothing we want. And you can see here, we have a few different smoothing options you can play with them and see what you prefer. But essentially, this is going to sort of make the stroke feel like it's dragging behind your brush a little bit. But what it's doing is it's just smoothing out and creating this beautiful, flowy brush stroke. Uh, it can be very helpful depending on what you are using the brush for in Photoshop. So don't sleep on the smoothing feature. It can be very useful uh, for certain things uh, that you do. Tip number 10, all right, you've got your image. It's finished, it's looking cool just the way you want it to look and you're ready to export it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can save images out, but maybe one of the fastest and easiest is to just right click on the layer and choose quick export as JPEG and then choose where you'd like to save it on your hard drive, go ahead and save it, and you're done. But I hear what you're saying. I don't have quick export as JPEG. Mine's quick export as PNG or something else ridiculous. Well, you can go file, export, and choose export preferences. And here in the export preferences, choose. Don't go with PNG, go with JPEG if you're saving a lot of JPEGs. And while you're at it, choose the quality to which it will save. You can also say, hey, look, ask where to save it or just export it to an asset folder right next to the current document so I don't have to choose where to save it every single time. Very, very helpful feature, exporting layers as a JPEG. All right, tip number 11, we can not only export a single layer as a JPEG, we can actually export multiple layers. So we could select multiple layers, right click. We could choose to export these out as JPEGs, which do which would do a bunch of individual JPEGs. I don't know if you could see that. It might have just disappeared off screen there for a second. But if we want to keep it all together, you just group the files, right click on the group and choose to quick export the group as a JPEG, follow the same settings, choose where you want to save it on your hard drive, and you have your own Darth or Dark Vader, wherever you would like it to be. Tip number 12 is don't sleep on the alter option button. It is used to duplicate just about everything you'll ever duplicate here in Photoshop. You can select the layer, hold down alter option, drag a copy out. You can drag out a layer straight up. If you have a layer on which you've placed a bunch of terrible or great, depending on the way you look at it, layer styles, you can take those layer styles, alter option, click and drag that FX icon and drop it on another layer and you will duplicate duplicate those layer styles to that new layer. You can do the same with masks. If I uh, grab a mask and alter option, drag it to another layer. You can do the same with smart filters, just about everything in Adobe Photoshop alter option. Think of it as the make a duplicate button. And now for tip number 13, we can go ahead and grab the ruler tool, which is located underneath the eyedropper tool. And we can use this to straighten images. We could drag a line across and say like, yeah, I'm pretty sure the horizon is supposed to be flat like that and choose straighten layer and it will straighten the image. Of course, we would need to go in with the crop tool and adjust it further. I think it actually needs to be straightened a little bit more than that. And then hit the letter C with the crop tool 
and then just size this all down a little bit and we have a much straighter image to look at. Okay, tip 14, straightening perspective. This is super duper helpful if you take pictures of a lot of your artwork and you bring it into Photoshop and you wanna straighten it up or if you do architectural photography and you need to straighten up stuff like maybe you wanna make it look like you're looking straight into the side of this Greek masterpiece. Let's go back to this image though because this is a little bit more of a realistic application. Select the layer and go filter camera raw filter. And this is pretty simple. You click on this little tool up here, the transform tool, and I like to select guided. And then what you do is you draw lines of areas that should be straight. So you say, you know what, the top of the paper and the bottom of the paper should both be straight across. And uh, camera roll is gonna attempt to straighten them that way. And then you take another line for the sides of the paper and you say, yeah, that's supposed to be a vertical straight up and down. And yeah, over here on the other side, also supposed to be vertical straight up and down. And camera raw will take it and straighten it right out. And then you can go ahead and use the crop tool, trim it down. So all you see is the nice, wonderful paper that you drew or wrote or did whatever you did onto it. And there you have it. We've straightened out our artwork right out of the camera. And by the way, if you want to see that extreme example, I'm just going to hot key myself right into camera raw and I'll show you, look at how crazy this will get. So you say like, yeah, that should probably be a vertical line over here. This pillar right about there should be a vertical line. It tries to make it vertical. And then you start taking the horizontal lines. You see, I make that horizontal and across the base of the pillars. Look at how ridiculous this is. That should also be horizontal. And Photoshop will try to use its intelligence to literally make the camera camera turn and shift as though you were looking at the side of uh, this building. All right, I'm going to close this stuff up. Tip 15. Did you know you can fill text and color fill layers and also vector shape layers, just shape layers in general, by using the hotkey option delete, that's alt backspace on the PC. So maybe the owner of this ramen joint says, well, the word ramen's a little too dark. And I say, all right, well, I can actually match it with the color of the yolk of the egg. That'll brighten it up. And with the text layer selected, I just sample the color, option delete, and boom, it fills the text with that different color. Also here with the color fill layer, when they say, ooh, it's actually not our red crap crab meat noodle looking things. Uh, rather, it's the blue ones. We can say, okay, uh, so we grab blue and set that as our foreground color. And then we select that color fill layer and we just hit option, delete or alt backspace and boom, it fills that with blue. By the way, if that seemed like a long process, it kind of was. Normally you would probably sample a color and just fill it like that, you know, do something like that. You keep changing quickly the color of what it is we've got going on there in that strange crab ziti rigatoni looking material. You can also, by the way, just double click on the color fill layer and it brings up the color picker. That can work as well. Or we can just go back to the original color that it was before I started messing around with it. Now, before we go too far from this image, tip number 16 is the hotkey for merging all layers up to their own layer. And that's command shift option E. And there we go. We've just taken all visible layers, popped them up. They are now part of their own layer where we could do something like right click and quick export as a JPEG, you know, things like that. But let's say you just want to export the word ramen with the background image and ignore the purple for this one version that you're making, right? What you want to do is just select those two layers, unlock your background image if that is one of the layers you're working with, right? Select those two layers and just hold the hotkey command option E, that's control alt E, and it will just use those layers you've selected and merge them together. So now we have a copy of the text and the image merged together, but our little crab noodles are a red and not purple. But you can use that hotkey just selecting any number of layers. Uh, just select certain layers and you merge those selected layers up to a new layer. Command option E, control alt E on the PC. All right, tip number 17. Let's talk about using the healing brush along the edge of an object. So I'm going to zoom in here on the sky and let's say for whatever reason we want to, I don't know, change something here on the edge of this building. You can use your healing brush and number one, you usually want to reduce the diffusion when you're near edges. But for a complex edge like this, the real key is sample the exact edge. Don't sample over here in the solid area and expect to be able to work up to the edge, right? Like this, because then you're going to get all this weird blurring and stuff. But if you actually just sample the edge you can make sure the edge lines up perfectly and then when you go ahead and edit and heal you're not going to get any of that crazy weird haloing you can use this technique for when you're retouching eyebrows lips the edges of uh, people's faces edges of buildings like this uh, landscape shots anything where you have edges of stuff and i think everything i've ever seen in my life just about has an edge maybe not the ocean but other than that pretty much everything has an edge these little uh, pedestrian strips you could go 
down here and say, all right, I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit and go ahead and paint away some of that white in the middle. And you can get a nice edge without all sorts of crazy blurring by sampling and beginning with the edge first. All right, next up we've got changing the color of anything like this crab. You can use it using the color replacement brush located underneath the brush. And a couple things, I usually use the color mode. I like to use this sampling mode. I believe it's called continuous sampling or something like that. And the contiguous works great for me. Tolerance of 30 is usually good. And we just choose our foreground color. Let's say we want this to become a blue crab and we go in and we just wanna make sure we keep that plus icon over the thing uh, which we are changing the color of, right? So we make sure that's stays over the crab's body and we will just affect the color of the crab and you can go through very very quickly see I kind of moved out over the deck and I started changing the color of the deck uh, but you can very quickly go in and change the color of objects uh, like this now obviously this is ridiculous because we're making him so insanely blue uh, but the, the point still stands. You can quickly change the color of anything, even intricate objects like this, quickly and easily using this brush. You probably would want to make it a little smaller, though, and be a little more tender and gentle around the finer parts of our little crabby friend here. Now for tip number 19, let's say we're working on an image. We got a bunch of layers and we just want to view one of those layers, like maybe the background layer. We want to make everything else go away. Hold down your alter option button and click on the eyeball for that layer. It will show just that layer and shut off all the other layers. Alter option, click the eyeball for that layer once more, to turn all the layers back on and you get your adjusted image once more. All right, tip number 20. If you're anything like me, you probably have a bunch of documents open in Photoshop at the same time. You can quickly switch from open document to open Open document using the hotkey control tab that's control tab on Windows and on Mac and if you want to go backward like I just passed the document I wanted just throw control shift tab in there and it will go backward through your documents so control tab to go forward control shift tab to go backward through your documents tip 21 is it's actually pretty straightforward but it's a newer thing you can do in Photoshop and that is copy layers from document to document with ease select the layers you want to copy like maybe I want to grab all my adjustment layers here command or control Ctrl-C to copy them, go to another image, Commander control v to paste them in place. Maybe I want to go to another image, Commander control v to paste them in place. And I can quickly go through a bunch of images and see what they look like. All right, tip 22 is all about the rotate tool and how underrated it is. So sometimes you may be cleaning up an image and I don't know about you, but I like to never really have to be painting side to side or straight up and down. That's where the rotate tool is great. And remember, just like we can press and hold the space bar to get our hand tool, you can press and hold the letter R, get your rotate tool, rotate your image however you like so you're working just how you prefer to be working and then go back to work and finish painting or dodging and burning or doing whatever you're doing to your image hold down the letter r rotate back or hold down r and hit reset view and you're back to normal just as if nothing happens the rotate tool it's a temporary rotation and it's really really useful for lots of different things. Tip 23 is all about the hidden scrubby sliders so just about everywhere in photoshop you see these little inputs these sliders yeah you can click down and use the slider but almost all of them you can just hover over the word and scrubby slide away right if we go window clone source and we want to adjust the angle of the clone we can just hover over the icon and rotate and move that back and forth there's so much you can do here with the x right with the y you can do all sorts of crazy things but also if you bring up something like the brush tool or even the color replace tool like we just used, you can hover over tolerance and adjust the tolerance that way. It's a really, really great and quick way to go ahead and adjust these tools. And by the way, if you hold down shift, you'll move those numbers really quickly. If you hold down alter option when using the scrubbies, you move those numbers really slowly. So a lot of different stuff you can do there and it can be really helpful and really fast to just grab layers and you know push the opacity up or down in a hurry. All right, tip number 24, we're almost finished. Is the middle gray eyedropper. This is located in a bunch of different places. Most notably, you're going to have it in your curves. Command or Control M to bring up curves, by the way, for a layer. It's this gray eyedropper. You'll also have it in levels. Command or Control L to bring up levels. There's the gray, uh, middle gray eyedropper. And you'll also have it in the camera raw filter. Command Shift A. That's Control Shift A on the PC. You can grab the middle gray eyedropper. And basically what you do is locate an area of your photo that should be gray. And this image has this heavy green color cast. 
We can say, look, the roof looks like it probably should be gray. And here we've got, it's shaded, not direct sunlight. It's all diffused light, which is perfect for getting white balance. Let's click on that. And you can see the whole image is adjusted to make sure that that doesn't have the green color cast. So the middle gray eyedropper can be a lifesaver and a big time saver here in Photoshop when you're playing around with your white balance. And last but not least, the 25th tip is the hidden banana tool. And you can get to it by hitting your little triple dotty dot here and choose an edit toolbar and then just simply hold down shift and click a done. Choose any of your other tools and you will now have the new edition banana toolbar to infuse a little drop of color into an otherwise very gray and drab Photoshop UI. So that's it for this one, folks. Thanks for checking out the tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell as well. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this other video I've got all about this guy jumping through a glowing portal on the streets of Tokyo. It's a cool photo manipulation in Photoshop tutorial that I think you're just gonna love. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video all the way till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.